and welcome to my channel. I'm Georgia Kay. I'm a first year history PhD student at Brown University. And in today's video, I'm going to be doing a long awaited Q&A about Brown, about being graduate student at Brown, and just all things. I feel so horrible because I've been getting so many email from emails from you guys asking questions about like life of Brown, what I think about it, advice. And unfortunately, I haven't been able to get back to everyone because I've just been so busy with the semester. So I figured also, if you watch my vlogs, then you'll see that I always have a dog in the background. This is my dog, Carly. Um, but yeah, I've been getting emails from you guys, just questions on social media, um, DMs and stuff, and I haven't been able to answer, every, uh, answer everyone's questions because I've been busy. And so I figured this video would be a good chance for me to have like a one-stop shop for all of the questions that I've gotten and just talk about Brown, my experience, and what you should know if you're coming to Brown as a graduate student. So yeah, so I hope I can answer your questions. If I miss anything, please let me know in the, <laughs> not in the description box. If I miss anything, please let me know in the comments. I'll be down there answering any additional questions that you may have. And Uh, on to the question for current graduate students, people who are incoming. First, I want to say congratulations and welcome to Brown. I feel like that was one of the best things um, when I was coming is just everyone was being like, welcome. And it just feels like such a welcoming community. Um, I just finished my first year, so I'm going to answer these as best as I can. And just want to preface that this is my experience. I cannot speak for every department. I cannot speak for every situation. Um, for context, I came in at 22 years old, so I was relatively young. I didn't come in with a family. Um, I'm a first generation student uh, and I'm first gen Jamaican as well and so I have my own unique background and so that's just sort of contextualizes the way that I feel and I'll try to add context to the questions as well when I actually answer them. Um, but the first question that I want to answer, this is one that I get a lot and is what do you think about Providence? Um, is Providence a fun place to live? Is it like gonna be the worst thing ever? And I will say I personally thought I was not gonna like Providence when I was comparing schools like actually the um I considered the location to be one of the cons of my list and now I'm like I can't believe I ever thought that because I personally love Providence Providence has grown on me like it's truly grown on me and I was not expecting that at all the only downside I will say of Providence and this is going to be different for everyone a lot of people come from the north so they're used to it but for me it was really the cold and the winters so the winters were really bad for me because I grew up in the Caribbean and then I moved to Atlanta and Atlanta is warm and so coming here I was just not a fan of the cold even though it was not the coldest winter I've heard but that was definitely a tough transition for me and all of my warm weather friends said the same thing so I think if you're coming from the south or you're coming from somewhere that's warm you might have a harder transition in terms of weather um but for everyone else they seem to be vibing with it so again it depends on your situation but overall providence as a city i will say i find a lot of things to do but it depends on your particular hobbies i know people like to go clubbing and other things like that i wouldn't i wouldn't say providence is a great place for clubbing um that's not really the vibe it's more of like a bar scene i would say and there's just like random activities there's a lot of flea markets festivals and brown um the actual graduate school hosts events and lots of things like that and so there's i personally always find things to do but again, it's gonna depend on your hobbies. It's gonna depend on what you like to do. There's a lot of trivia nights and just like more low key um, ways to get together with people. I think if you have a good group of friends, then you can always find something to do. There's always something. And most of the things aren't super, super expensive. So that would sort of tie into like the cost of living question that I get. I have found it to be relatively livable with the stipend that we're on, which I'll talk about later but I've been able to afford to um, go out every once in a while. And also I would say the food scene in Providence is really good. And it's even gotten better because since I moved here, there's been like at least 10 restaurants popping up just around the area that I live. So good food. My brother came, he loved the food. So I cannot speak highly enough. Um, but yeah, I think if you're, I'm an introvert, so I'm more of a low key person. I like just doing more intimate things. I'm not like a big clubber. I'm not like, Go, and I'm not like a big concert person either. I love concerts, but it's not something where I go to concerts concerts like every month. And I would say for people who enjoy more of that like really, really lively scene where they want to go to raves, they want to go to clubs, they want to go out like that. Um, luckily, Boston and New York, I know a lot of people go to Boston and New York a lot. I haven't just because I've been pretty comfortable in Providence, but I do plan to go there more often. But it is doable because there's a train. So people take the train to Boston and New York. And I think 
um, when I first came, everyone's like, yeah, you can go to Boston all the time. Um, and just that just never happened for me because I was just like, as a graduate student, as a PhD student, I just didn't find the time to do it. It's definitely doable, but it depends on your priorities, especially your first year. And I feel like your first year, you're still getting used to the area. And so you might not be able to do that as much, but it is an option if you want it. Okay, and the next thing is sort of the cost of living, what do graduate students get paid? And again, this is gonna depend. So if you're a PhD student coming in, I think the current um, stipend is $43,000 per year. Um, and that is like the base stipend. So some people might get additional fellowships. You might come in with a fellowship that might give you a top off. This is something you wanna talk to your department about. So make sure that they are on the same track with like, okay, well, what is your actual stipend gonna be? But for the main part, like, like 43,000 is what it's gonna be for, I think the 2023, 24 academic year. Um, and that is livable in Providence, depending on your situation. As a single person, I find that stipend to be livable with kids. I don't know how I would do that unless you have a partner or some sort of outside support. If you're a caregiver for someone, it's really, really gonna depend. But if you're a single person living in Providence, it is doable um, to have your own place, to go out every once in a while and all of these things and maybe even and save some is very fortunate because I know a lot of graduate students don't live on stipends that they're able to save on but that's just how so happens to be the case for Brown and we also get like health insurance and other things so that helps a lot to sort of like um help to have like a good financial balance if you're not having to like pay for things out of pocket and have good health insurance so I would say finances if you're coming in as a single person um or if you have any sort of support it is um, a livable stipend and in terms of housing which is really the biggest question that I get a lot um you can definitely find housing on that price so I would say housing if you are looking to live with roommates you can pay anywhere from like eighteen hundred dollars per not eighteen hundred dollars if you're looking to live with roommates you can pay from like eight hundred dollars I would say to upwards of like twelve or thirteen hundred dollars depending on how nice the place is I currently live in a studio that I paid thirteen hundred dollars for but I was very 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 lucky because I actually um locked in this place in February before I moved so that was like literally months because I moved in August and so I would say my number one tip for people looking for housing is to start early I say the people who start early who um join all the things they find housing really well and by the time you're coming in the summer a lot of the housing options are gone unfortunately so if you are coming in um it might not be as helpful for this year because it's already about to be summer but if you're watching this video in the future or thinking about coming to brown and you get in definitely definitely start looking for housing as soon as you get in as soon as you even have an inkling that you might go because housing goes fast and if you're not too picky then it's fine but i personally was picky i wanted a certain location i wanted a certain like um amenities i wanted a washer and dryer unit those things aren't as common some buildings they might have washer and dryer in the building but not in the unit um some buildings they might not have a washer and dryer at all some of the buildings are much older because it is like new england um so if you have like criteria i would say start early start searching for for apartments early if you care at all about like the space you live in if you're particular about certain things and yeah if you want to live alone I would say the prices at this point it has been going up like crazy but if you want to live alone in a one bedroom studio apartment it's going to be like low end $1,300 upwards to like $1,800 um that wasn't the case when I was just moving like I would say it's for, like the $1,300 that I was paying was more standard but now with um, inflation and stuff, like people had been seeing a lot of houses like and apartments just like skyrocketing in price. So yeah, that's unfortunate, but I would say $1,300 on the low end. You might be able to find something cheaper, but it's probably not gonna have a lot of the standard amenities like washer and dryer and other things. So it really depends on your priorities. Um, and how like nifty you can be in like searching all of the places for housing uh you might be able to find something but yeah i would say that's sort of like the range um and of course if you're splitting with that with someone and with a partner or something then it helps a ton and also in terms of housing places to look for housing number one i would say the brown university off-campus housing they do um they have a housing website that i use i didn't find anything on there but i definitely still check it and i will be moving next year so i'll be um so i've already been keeping my eye, eye out for like places to live areas that i might want to live in um brown university off campus they don't update as much but they do vet the places so you, at least you know for sure like those are um 
sort of like approved by Brown in a way. Um, I know some people still use Craigslist, which I was surprised to find out. I didn't use Craigslist, Craigslist at all, but I do know people um, who found their apartments on Craigslist. I would just say be very um, wary in terms of like, make sure you vet the person who you're gonna be getting the apartment for, make sure that you're visiting it and all of those things so that you don't get scammed. I haven't heard of anyone getting scammed, but I just don't know. I'm just like, Craigslist seems kind of sketchy to me, but that's just me. You can still look at the standard places like apartments.com, Zillow. I don't feel like you're gonna find as much there because they're gonna have like the regular regular apartments. You really, you're in really is gonna be like somewhere on the periphery, so Craigslist or Brown University off campus. If you're looking for graduate housing, you should look on the Brown Graduate Student website. They have a few um, options. They're not a lot and they go fast, so I wouldn't bank on them. Um, but if you do have some sort of like special accommodation that might help uh, to check on their website. And then the number one thing I would say is a graduate student listserv. If you are a member of the Brown Graduate Student Community and you have your credentials, which might help with like timeline, um, so as soon as you get your credentials, or even before, I think you can do it. Yes, you can do it before. Um, just they'll, they'll verify that you're a Brown student and then you are able to join the listserv. And the listserv is just sort of like an online email chain between the graduate community. And when people are leaving and they're gonna be moving off, they'll tell you about their apartments before they even hit the market. So I know a lot of people, like a few people in my cohort, that's how they found their um, apartments is through the listserv, is because like an older graduate student will be like, hey, I'm leaving in a few months. Any new students wanna like take over this lease? So that's also one of your best bets. And I would say lastly for housing, um, I would check Facebook as well. There's a few Facebook groups. I'll link all of this stuff in the description box as well as much as I can think of. Um, I joined a few of the Facebook groups and those Facebook groups, I would say it's a lot more for people who are looking for roommates um, that I've seen in there, but there might be a few options as well for one bedroom studio apartments. But for one bedroom studio apartments, I would say you should check the listserv, Craigslist, and occasionally Zillow or apartments.com might have options. So check all of the things and you might look out with housing. It really is a little bit chaotic. I'm not gonna lie, finding housing seems to be the biggest stressor for Brown graduate students coming in. But once you sort of establish yourself in the community, it becomes a lot easier. And next is transportation. A question that I get a lot is how do you get around? Do you need a car? Should I keep my car? Should I bring my car? Uh, so personally for me, what I did is I sold my car before I came just because when I visited, I talked to other, gra other graduate students and they seem to think that having a car is not a huge necessity. It depends on your lifestyle. If you're someone who's going to be going to other states and other and things like that, if you have family close by, you might want to have a car. But if you're going to be in like the Providence area, it's pretty walkable and it's also like the Ripta is somewhat reliable, somewhat. Um, and the Brown Graduate Student Shuttle, the, and the Brown Shuttle is also really helpful. So there's tons of options for me. I walk everywhere basically, or I take the Brown University Shuttle because it's super close to where I live. And so I just use those as my two options. And I occasionally Uber if I'm going somewhere that's like super far, but the Ubers are really cheap because Providence is very small. Um, so yeah, you can get around easy without a car, like super, super easy without a car. It's only if you're trying to go outside of Rhode Island that it may become, um, an issue so you might want to think about that and then another thing to consider if you do bring your car is parking so some of these apartments they'll give you um, one off street parking spot um, but a lot of them don't and so the options are you can rent and like you can rent someone's driveway I know I've heard people doing that where it's like they rent a spot from someone like that's something you would find in the list or if you really do want to bring your car or you can pay some hefty hefty parking um, fees I know that for some of the parking garages it's like upwards of $200 a month so that's not cheap but again if you really really want to have your car the option is there but if you don't want to have a car it is really really easy to get around if you're going to be staying within the Providence area. Other question I get to is making friends. Making friends, sort of like building community at Brown. Uh, this one is kind of interesting because it really is going to depend. It's going to depend a lot on the program that you're in, the time that you're coming in, and all of that stuff. Um, I would say I made a lot of my friends through my cohort and I made other friends through graduate student orientation. Um, and that's sort of the ways that I did it. But I know other people have like, um, people do trivia groups outside of Brown or they continue to go to the graduate student events, which I honestly need to be better at because I don't really go to a lot of the graduate student events, even though 
though I planned to I just like school was just so busy and I think first year was such a transition for me that I didn't get to but maybe in the future um but if you're trying to build community I would say be really intentional about it from the beginning because it's much harder especially if you're in a PhD program I think for master's students it's a little bit easier to build that community because the program's a little bit bigger so you have more options you might have more social events for PhD students you're really gonna have mo mostly department events or like speaker events where people you can talk to people but it isn't as organic of a situation to have like a long chat with someone so first first month I would say go to the graduate student orientation talk to people introduce yourself to people um, and you might and then you have to do the work to actually maintain those friendships uh, but yeah I'm not gonna be a hypocrite most of my friends are <laughs> from my cohort because we see each other a lot and they're honestly amazing people um, and other friends are just people that I so happen to stick with that I met in graduate student orientation so so yeah so the community is there if you want it but it's gonna take a lot of intentionality because Brown is like it's not a huge school but it's big enough where you have to if you have friends in different apartments you have to make an effort to see them and also people are kind of like in their own sectors so graduate students in the department tend to do their own thing and, and there is cross collaboration there is some sort of cross collaboration but it's gonna take that extra step so depends it's up to you what you want um but it is definitely is possible to make close friendships and advice for if you're coming in and worried about making friends i would say to um follow the different organizations that you might be interested in so for me i followed the brit which is like the black the black student organization for the graduate students i followed the graduate student council i signed up for email lists and all of those things sort of like having a constant feed so you know what's happening we do get a daily list of like what's happening at brown every day but sometimes it's just like all over the place it's not super tailored um so it might be nice to just like sign up for the mailing list and follow people on instagram or tiktok or whatever um if you can find them and the next question i want to get to is dating and now this is one that i just think is so funny because people like ask they're like uh oh yeah so what's the like dating at brown if you are a single gal a single person coming to brown i would say again it's kind of like um making friends it's gonna take some level of intentionality i know that it is a big enough school where if you want to date other graduate students that is a possibility people are on apps and stuff like that um you can meet people organically through classes and all of those other things so it's basically like undergrad in a way but it's like not as like you're not gonna be meeting people at parties i don't think i haven't heard of that but you'll definitely be able to like meet people if you're on like a dating app or if you're just like trying to go to the actual events to talk to people um it's gonna be like anywhere else honestly you might meet some fun people you might not meet some fun people um i think the real question that people are asking is like is the workload so heavy will you have a work-life balance enough to actually be able to meet people and that i would say it also depends so if you when you come in you have to be super super intentional and super rigid about creating your own boundaries around work because i know that especially if you're at brown you're per probably a person who is um driven and you want to accomplish certain things and you want to hit all the goals and you want to feel like a rising star in your classes and in your labs and all of those things and all and you can in doing that you can sort of take away from your personal life so for me when i first came the first like two months i would say i was working around the clock like which is something i have happened not to do in undergrad i was never the person who stayed up all night studying i was like i had a really um strong boundary around making sure that i could also be a person on top of being a student and i lost that in the first two months but i was uh i knew that i wanted to get back to that place of work-life balance so i created systems so that i can get my work done faster um still maintain a quality of work but also just like making sure that i have time to do other things and when i came into brown i was single i didn't meet someone over the year that i've been here um and so yeah so maybe that's a testament i don't know i met my boyfriend um late fall uh so yeah so dating is a possibility for sure like genuinely i would say find a way to make sure that school does not take over your life because it's definitely definitely possible especially if you're a phd student where you have like four, five, six years at the school. You don't want to be that person who's like, oh, I study on weekends, on, on nights. Like that's not a flex. That's not a flex. Like have a life. Um, there's so much life to live during the PhD program, including dating, including making friends. So that's just one aspect of it. But prioritize the things that are important to you. If it is, then it's, 
it's something that's available it's there the people are there but it's going to be up to you to make those connections and to actually go out just go out meet people talk to people that's the way to do it and just tangentially quickly work-life balance as i said this is something i get you it's going to really depend on the program some programs are much harder than others some programs they expect people to do um like big papers they expect you to publish they expect you to maintain a minimum gpa all of these things so i would say when you're coming into your program read that graduate handbook and decide strategically what are the things that you absolutely need to do to progress in your program and what are the things that sort of like people say you need to do but at the end of the day nobody really cares you know what i mean there's just so many things like you have classes you have your sort of like overall professional development so everything can't be a fire like everything can't be you know a big deal so you have to decide for yourself like what are the things that actually need to progress make sure you get those things and then take the l's if you need to like i'm not gonna lie i have had to take l's this year as a first year phd student just give yourself time give yourself tons and tons of grace and be strategic and then the last few questions that I want to touch on, uh, one of the questions I get is sort of like what professors are like, picking classes. Um, in terms of professors, that's going to really depend on your department, but I will say generally, Brown professors that I've met are very nice. They're very invested in their students. Um, some professors are more strict than others in terms of like they have a certain way that they want their classes to run. They have certain systems that they want. And so it's going to be really like learning people's different styles. But this is something I feel like you, a lot of people pick up in undergrad. If you're going to graduate school, you probably know this, where some professors will be really different. You will vibe with some professors teaching styles. Others, you won't as much. Some professors, um, even within your graduate seminars, might expect more writing from you. Some professors might expect like more reading and I think it's just like one not being afraid to be picky about the classes that you pick and deciding okay well do I want to take on three four books extra a week for this class um is it super relevant to what I want to do is it going to help me reach my professional goals if not maybe decide to take another class maybe you decide to take a class that's going to allow you more flexibility um maybe you do need to take that class and so you're going to work around other things you might not have as many outside commitments because your class schedule is going to be a lot so it depends on your program because some programs they don't have a lot of options so if you're in a PhD program you might not have a ton of options for class selection um I know that's the case for a lot of people. If you're in a master's program, you might have a little bit more options. If you do have options, be picky, I would say. Be picky about reading the syllabus, going to class. At Brown, we have like that um, basic window of like, you get, I think it's a two weeks to decide what class you wanna do. So you can shop your classes. I had never shopped any of my classes. I should have though. I didn't shop my classes because I was just sort of like, oh, this sounds like thematically like something I would wanna do. And I would stick it out. Um, but second semester, I added a class to my course though that I was like oh I actually don't think this class is going to be a good fit and so I switched out of it and then added a course that was a little bit easier and it gave me that flexibility that time back that I needed to put more work into my other classes so that's just what I mean when I say be strategic is that Brown does offer you the opportunity to shop your classes and to move around your schedule in the first few weeks and so look into doing that read the syllabus decide is this something I can do do I like the professor's teaching style can I like get through this class and make your decisions from there. If you're a PhD student and you find that you don't have as many options, usually you can take classes in other departments. People have different limits. For some departments, you might be able to take a lot of classes outside of your department. For some, they might only limit you to like one or two. And so decide when you'll use those if you're not filling the options that you have. And then there's also options for you to take classes at different, um, at different institutions. So that's something I would think about and that's something I would consider doing as well. Okay, and the next question that I get is also just being a first gen, being a low income, being a person of color, being a part of the LGBTQ community. If you're from any sort of diverse affinity group, how do you find your people? How do you navigate Brown? Is Brown a welcoming space for people from different backgrounds? It depends. Um, I think generally Brown is a fairly liberal school. People are really open, but I do think um, it, is it is relatively homogenous. A lot of people come from high earning backgrounds and um, I think more so like socioeconomic background, there isn't a lot of diversity. Um, there is relative diversity among students of color 
but I would say, let me not lie. There is some, but there's not a lot. I do think there's ways to go in terms of diversity of brown, but I will say for the people that are here, um, there, there's a lot of people trying to build that community because there's just not a ton of people. So if you're a person of color, there's like Nabrit, um, there's different organization. If you're Asian, South Asian, like if you're from the Caribbean, like there's different organizations than people you can find. Um, but it's gonna take you actually going to those events you might want to follow those people on social media you might want to if you're a student of color definitely go to the student of color orientation that's where i met some of my closest friends the brown and if you're a person if you're a part of the lgbtq community there are lgbtq groups there are space safe 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 spaces on campus and so it's definitely there and i will say i haven't experienced any sort of like microaggressions based on my background as a black woman as a Caribbean woman and so I can only speak for me I can't speak for everyone else's experiences and I feel really bad when people ask me especially if you're asking about um you know being a part of the LGBTQ community or being um first gen or something like that I just can't speak for everyone's experience and so from my experience I found people to be welcoming um I think people try their hardest to sort of understand I do get frustrated sometimes because there isn't like a lot a lot of diversity I do wish there is more diversity but at the end of the day I do feel like there is um there's room for critique of course but there is stuff that's being done and I think there are people who are very very open to making spaces and doing things and i do think uh it's sort of the burden and privilege of being a person from any sort of diverse background or brown is that there are not our resources open to students who are trying to build community so if you want to do like a working group if you want to do a project that's on a certain community a lot of people are open to that but it is extra labor for students of color for students from other backgrounds so it's something to consider but i will say i found it to be a safe space i found it to be um a very welcoming space and i just bring my whole self like i try not to sort of like homogenize myself that's not the right word I try, I, I try not to assimilate and try to pretend that I'm something that I'm not I bring my entire self I am from all of these like very diverse backgrounds and so I bring that with me in the classroom and I find other people as well like I find Caribbean students I find other black students in different apartments and I we talk candidly about our experiences and I think that's where you really find like that connection is just being vulnerable with people and even though there might not be the same people as you in that room deciding that you're going to show up as yourself anyway um easier said than done but that's just how i've navigated it Whew. so that was a long long video um tons to chat about and i'm sure i missed some things so if i did don't forget, comment below. I'll try to get to them. But I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope it answers some of your questions. I'll try to list like all the resources that I talked about in the description box. So if you have any things that you heard me mention and you want to see, I might have it in the description box. And yeah, thank you guys for watching. Consider subscribing if you've made it this far. Um, I make content like this. I make content about graduate school, make content about Brown, and I would love to have you a part of the family. So I'll see you in my next video. Bye!